Hey everybody, Josh for Populi here, faculty and teaching assistants. I'm gonna show you something that might save you quite a little bit of time. Academic admins and registrars, you can listen up too. Crazy cats. You can categorize test questions and then build tests just from those categories. That means that once you've created those categories and all the attending questions, you can create tests much more quickly. I don't know if that holds any interest for you. Let's go to tests and then to questions. Let's create some questions. Boom, they're created. Also for our examples in this video, we're just using multiple choice questions, but obviously you can create whatever question types you like here. These questions have various commonalities. They're different difficulty levels, so I'm gonna go through and add them to the appropriate difficulty levels. And to do that for this first one here, I'm gonna click on the three stack dots, I'm gonna choose edit question, and then under categories, I'm going to add a level one category by putting in the name and then clicking return. And then I'll save. Now I can move on to the next question, type in the name of that same category and select the result that comes up. And I'll save that. I'll quickly do that for the last level one question as well. But we can add categories to questions another way as well. I can click the check boxes next to the level two questions and then go up to actions, choose add to categories, select any categories I want there and bang. Okay, we've got questions in a couple categories. Let's look at how you use those categories to save time creating tests. We have an empty test already created and when we go to add a question, we can choose to add questions from category. So I'll say that I wanna add questions from the level one category. I'll put in the total number of points, six allotted to this category, so questions will split that number of points between them. And then I'll enter the number of questions we want from this category, three. So we have a total of six questions in the level one category, but the test will randomly select three of those questions. Now I'll save this test, and this is the easy way to see what happens here. Go over to preview. You can see that the test is pulling up three questions randomly. And then if I hop back over to the design and then back over to preview, it'll pull in another three random questions. So that's what's happening whenever someone starts a test. The test looks at the category and then just pulls in the required number of questions from the category. So that covers the basics. If that's all you need, you're good to go. The rest of the video is just exploring and applying the feature in various ways. Let's hop back over to questions over here. We have those various categories and you might notice that the questions relate to each other beyond just these levels. I'll quickly add the third level category. So we have the levels, but then we have some bear questions and some fish questions, some author questions, and some George Lucas questions. So we can apply some more categories across these questions. Bear questions, we're gonna click to tick those boxes, choose actions, and we'll go to add to categories, then create new category for bear questions. Fish questions, click, actions, add to categories, create new category. Author questions, click, go to actions, add to categories, create new category. George Lucas questions, click, actions, add to categories, create new category. Then let's go back to our test. So we can add a new question, and then we can use categories, and then we can set this one to pull one bear question. And we'll do the exact same thing for a fish question, and the exact same thing for an author question, and the exact same thing for a George Lucas question. Let's go to preview. Looks great. So your test can be made up of these various categories that just pull questions in. Let's get a slightly different angle on this. Say that you have a quiz every week. Every quiz has 10 questions. You add your questions for week one, all 10 questions are added to the course and then tagged or categorized as week one. Then you create a test that pulls 10 questions from the week one category. 
Then you repeat the process for week two and week three and so on. And then you get about seven or eight weeks in and you're gonna have a midterm with a bunch of review from those previous weeks. Then all you have to do is use the categories for each week to create the midterm. You add a category section for week one, require four questions, then add one for week two, require four questions, etc. back through all those weeks. Once you've done that, for all six or seven weeks, you've handled at least the review portion of your midterm, easy. And then you can do the same thing for the final once you get there. One last thing, if you want all of the questions in a category to show up on the test, just note the number of questions in the category, then set the number of questions to that entire number right down here as you're setting up the test. We have a bunch of related resources about tests. We have a video about easy online test setup and a long one about running courses more generally. We've also got a couple links to knowledge base articles about tests and questions. Check those out. Do you wanna dig deeper and get more value out of Populi for your school? Join our Discord server. It's where Populi users can ask each other questions and capitalize on community knowledge. If you wanna become a part of that community, go to Help and Populi and choose Join the User Community. That'll take you to a spot that has instructions about how you can get set up. I've been Josh for Populi. You've been great. Thanks for watching. Thank you.